Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and this is the long 2023 Land Rover Defender 130. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how this big three row SUV fits real size adults and see how it drives on the road. Stay tuned. Yes, gearheads, I have finally got a Defender here on my home turf. I first tested a Defender three years ago on my first ever trip for the channel, a video that never really made it to the channel, but I've been just infatuated with this vehicle ever since. That was a 110 model. I got to drive it off-road and test it off-road. And if you know anything about the Defender nameplate, you know this used to be a body on frame vehicle out of the war effort from Great Britain. Now we get a unibody vehicle here with still some pretty competent chops. And since we're talking about the 2023 models, not the long wheelbase, well, not really long wheelbase, but the long version, let's go ahead and pop this hood and talk about what motivates this vehicle. So to get under the hood, pretty simple. All told, you just pop it from under uh, the dash and then there's a nice little grab handle to get it open. This is a mild hybrid, three liter turbocharged inline six. So all that will come into play as we're talking, especially the mild hybrid part, uh, but Turbo inline six making 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque as our P400 is spec. This is a decent amount of power really for this vehicle. Uh, the 130 rides on the same wheelbase as the 110, just gets a little extra booty space back there in the back. We do have a ZF sourced eight speed automatic transmission. This does have all wheel drive with as the Brits call it a twin speed transfer box, not a transfer case. Terrain response mode with selectable off-road drive modes. Unfortunately, we don't get to test that or the hill descent control, but we can talk about the air ride suspension and different things of that nature. And just how this uh, inline six holds up in traffic situations as we drive it around. As we close the hood on this one, we could talk about the styling of it. As I said, the first time I ever drove a Defender was three years ago, and I've just been infatuated with it ever since. And to get one for a full week here on my home turf has just put an infinitesimally big smile on my face. I, I've just been so happy to get to test this one. We'll start right up here in the front. Now, I did air quotes when I said this is a Land Rover Defender because JLR, as they are now known, is kind of doing something interesting with the Land Rover brand in that it is more of a mark uh, like trail rated for Jeep. The actual brand of this now is Defender. The model is 130. They are doing the same thing with the Range Rover and the uh, Discovery nameplates. Both of those are becoming their own brands with sub models underneath. We've seen Range Rover, Range Rover Sport, and uh, many different sub models being introduced. So yes, that is what the brand is doing. Land Rover, even though you'll find that badge on here quite a bit, is really not the, br the, the brand of this one. Defender is the new brand. Just a little history lesson, modern history lesson for you. But this really does pay homage to Defenders of the past, even though, yes, like I said, this really has more in common with a Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee than it does a Jeep Wrangler. No longer body on frame. This is a unibody, but it is still quite capable off-road. Unfortunately, uh, we got this under the stipulation set. It would not uh, venture into an off-road test. Given that this is the longer wheelbase one, I, I don't hold as big a grudge as I would if I had gotten a 110 or a short wheelbase 90. Uh, we'll go ahead and talk about the off-road chops of this one before we go any further into the styling uh, because we do have the adaptive air ride suspension with three ride heights. You get the entry exit ride height and the normal ride height, which is where we are right now, and then the off-road 
ride height. In normal suspension, we get eight and a half inches of ground clearance, but we can max out at 11 and a half. So quite the jump there. The standard approach angle is 30.1 degrees with a max of 37.5. We have a 24 and a half degree departure angle, even with all that extra space hanging off of the back back there, still an impressive rear departure angle, which is better than something like an off-road midsize pickup truck in the GMC Canyon 84 we've already tested. At its max, we get a 28.5 degree departure angle, 22 degree breakover, and 27.8 in its max ride height. Again, this gets the same wheelbase as the 110. We just get a longer back end back there in the back. This does have a mo maximum water weighting depth of 35.4 inches. And we'll show you a cool feature about that on the inside. Let's talk about styling. Very uh, boxy, rugged, uh, squared off look that does rival that of the Ford Bronco. But again, this is more Grand Cherokee than it is Wrangler or Bronco uh, because of how it is designed, but it definitely gives that rugged off-road appearance while still paying homage to the original. Small details like this right here. Uh, this is plastic. It is not meant to step on, but it pays homage uh, to the diamond plating that used to be on the hoods of previous Defenders that allowed you access up onto the roof of the vehicle. We get all LED lights up front, LED headlights, LED running lights. I really like the halos with those uh, squares. That is kind of a repeating theme as we go throughout. And being that this is a British car, we get front and rear fog lights. We'll talk about that as we get around to the back. Looking down here, uh, again, we were talking about ground clearance and approach angle and all that. We do have a lot of plastic up front that is gonna be the first point of contact. Uh, but again, with that air ride suspension, we get a lot of room to play around with. This one does have headlight washers, again, uh, going to this luxury off-road uh, mindset that this vehicle has. Headlight washers, we have a heated windshield, all kinds of uh, different uh, tech on the side of it uh, to make it a comfortable and luxurious off-roader. Uh, Holly described it, I'll, I'll give a little preview to her review of it as kind of a posh off-roader. And I, I don't disagree with that assessment. As I put the uh, camera down on the tripod here, uh, I do just want to call out some interesting features here on the side. We get fender vents that are actually real and functional. I can see air coming through them, so that's a nice touch as well. But while I've got this sitting here and running, I did want to hop in and show you the different ride heights of this vehicle because with this air ride suspension works rather quickly. I'm going to go ahead and put it in its max ride height and you can see just how quickly it lifts up and how much taller this vehicle really is now that we are in our maximum ride height. And this thing really does stand up on its toes. I did not realize how tall it was until I tried to get out of it in this situation. And then I can go ahead and hit that button twice and drop it down into its entry exit ride height, which again, it does very quickly and quite a bit. Uh, given how long this vehicle is, it really does look more like a minivan uh, when it is in its lowest position, which is what we are in here. It just seems so low down to the ground, but makes getting in and out of it very easy. And as a luxurious three row vehicle, it has made it very easy for like uh, my family to get in and out of all three rows. So I did want to show you that right there. It did not change the speed of the camera whatsoever uh, to show you how quickly this vehicle goes up and down. Our model does have the 20 inch uh, wheels here on this one, uh, wrapped in a Pirelli Scorpion Zero tires. So these are two 5560R20 with this five split spoke design wheel. It is a nice design. Uh, you can get steelies on Defenders. I know that's what everybody wants, but uh, these are a really nice classy look. Uh, they tend to stick to variations of the five spoke design. And we get a lot of sidewall on the side of this, which really does uh, help and pay uh, dividends on road. 
Being that this is meant to go off-road, we do get black plastic lower cladding, which saves your paint. And you can see, no, I did not wash this because this gold paint color really does hide the dirt well. But I did just want to show you how a week's worth of living with this in winter, fall in East Texas uh, works on this paint color. It really does hide it well, though it could use a little uh, wash and spruce uh, just a little bit. Very interesting how Land Rover or Defender goes about uh, painting this one. So we get body color down here. This is a plastic panel. We get a black plastic panel here and then more body color before a little more black and a black roof on this. I really like the contrasting black roof. And then you might be wondering about this square here on the side. Instead of painting the whole uh, C pillar on this one, they gave you this square design. You can option a pack uh, to go on the side, which allows you to store and lock some of your dirty gear. But I did want to call out, it's especially obvious here, uh, the mismatch in the alignment here uh, on the panel on the door versus the panel on the vehicle itself. Just an interesting look uh, that I wanted to point out. It bothers me just ever so slightly every time I look at it. But being a 130, this is the same wheelbase as the 110. So it shares the back doors with the 110. All the extra space really does come back here behind the square on the side. And this vehicle received a lot of criticism because again, it already garnered a lot of criticism for being a unibody, replacing a body on frame. How rugged and off-road can it be? And then you're further hampering its off-road ability with its uh, departure angle by stretching the back end of it, not even elongating the wheelbase. And it, it just caught a lot of criticism for that uh, design choice moving forward. But the craze with usable three-row vehicles really has picked up. Again, comparing to Jeep Grand Cherokee, this really does compare very favorably against the Grand Cherokee L, a vehicle with a very off-road heritage background that has increased uh, with a longer wheelbase and a third row. Moving forward, you'll see on the inside how this compares to that Grand Cherokee L when we climb back in the back. I really like this design element above all other things. Instead of having a round back end that translates from the side to the back, we just get this sharp, hard corner back here. The back end isn't completely flat. You can see there is a little bit of a curve to it, but I just absolutely love how the vehicle stops as you get around to the back. As we come around to the back here, I turned my uh, turn signals off, but I guess we can go ahead and uh, turn them back on by popping inside, get a little peek at what the inside of the vehicle looks like. Hazard button is located up here. I do want to show you what the turn signals look like back here in the back. And because they use both the fog lights and the brake lights on this one, uh, so you really do get a lot of notification for anybody back behind you exactly what you're going to be doing if you put a blinker on. But a very cool look. Again, circles and squares working in conjunction with one another back here. We get this hard plastic uh, spare tire cover back here in the back with a body match uh, center section that you can see aligns with the back window. Just the attention to detail on this vehicle. We'll talk more about that when we get inside. We do have the Defender and the P400 badge. That refers to which engine we have. It is the most powerful uh, turbocharged inline six uh, that Defender offers. And as we come here and open the back, again, much like Bronco and Wrangler, we get a swing door back end, which comes into play when you're talking about this as a family vehicle. I will say it is very easy to open. We do have that gas strut there. Super easy to open and close, unlike Bronco and Wrangler. And because we don't have a removable roof, uh, the window glass goes with it. Again, making it a very simple process all the way around. It is very nice. We can talk about storage back here because again, one of the things we benefit from with the 130 is rear cargo area 
and I'm going to throw a bunch of numbers at you. Right now, in its configuration with these three, uh, third row seat up, we get 15.3 cubic feet of space. Fold those down, you get 35.8 cubic feet of space. Fold the second row down, and you get 76.1. But those are just numbers. How does that work in actuality? You can see this is a 6 or 40 20 40, excuse me, 40 20 40 split bench third row. We do have top tethers all the way across, but you simply pull on the nylon strap here and you can fold all three sections down independently of one another to open up that additional space. But it is not flush. Uh, with the storage floor back behind it. There's no way to like raise this up to be flush, uh, which I, I guess is a little bit of a knock for me. If you've got long items in here, they're going to be teetering over this last section here uh, because you've placed them up on the higher section back here. If we were to buy this vehicle, we would most likely ride with the seats folded down more often than not. We do have a false load floor and all your jack and equipment down here, down below the seats. But again, there's no way to raise that up to match uh, the back seat uh, folded down position right here, which is a little bit of a miss for me. And then again, we can fold the 40-20-40 split bench second row down for more cargo space. I do want to call out a few cool features back here in the back. Uh, we do have, I kind of moved it out of the way, whoops, a uh, cargo cover right here that is flexible. Uh, I've removed it because it was more of a nuisance than anything, but it helps hide uh, what cargo you have back here. We get a silver painted cover back here. And get a little extra power right there. Get a couple of hooks here on the side if you need it. A couple of D-ring tie downs down here if you need it as well. And because of the adjustable suspension, you can adjust the back of the vehicle up or down back here to help you load the vehicle um, easier if you need to. One last thing I will go ahead and call out about the door back here. Uh, we do get some storage back here in the door. You can see you get your uh, triangle hidden back under this removable panel. A lot of exposed rivets around it as well. But I had to load groceries in the back of this vehicle in the rain. And anybody who owns a three-row SUV is used to the cover or the canopy of that rear hatch when it's open as you're loading groceries. I did not have that luxury with the swing gate. Small uh, side note, I know, uh, but just one thing to think about if you're looking at this as your daily uh, vehicle, you don't have that in rainy situations. I know, small uh, problems to note. Also, with that spare tire hanging off the back and this being a long vehicle, it does fit in our garage, but I had to back it in and we have to like tiptoe around uh, the spare tire as we're going in and out of our garage. This does fit, but I would want the 110 for our family. Closing the hatch is very easy. You don't have to slam it like you do on like a Bronco or a Wrangler. Very easy to do. Now let's move inside. Before we get into the Defender 130, I did want to show you the key. It is a proximity key, but interestingly enough, you get the Def uh, Land Rover badge, not Defender on it. You get lock, unlock, head, headlights, and uh, your hatch release, as well as uh, your hazard button right there. A typical British style on uh, what is offered. No power opening rear hatch on this one because of that uh, swing gate. Will note, when the vehicle is locked, it does fold the mirrors in for you. But you can uh, simply unlock the vehicle with the buttons here on the side. Interestingly though, the button is on the wrong side. I am a left-handed person, so this doesn't quite work for me, uh, but as a right hand uh, comes to grab the uh, door latch, you can push the button right there. Most manufacturers put them here next to the key, which I would imagine you normally open the driver's door with your left hand, so you'd want the button right there. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Is that weird for you? I, I'm a lefty, and I still use my left hand uh, to open the doors, or of course I use my left. You get it. Just let me know down in the comments. Am I weird for that? Uh, as we open the door, I really like how we get a lot of body color in here. Uh, Land Rover Defender brings in the exterior inside and that is a nice touch there is a lot of customization that can be done on the interiors of these vehicles so i won't go into 
every bit of detail because you can change uh, the color of different uh, portions of this inside, but you do get that body color there. Really like this material here, uh, along with all the exposed rivets. Again, giving that kind of upscale ruggedness to it. We do have the Meridian sound system in here with uh, the, the speaker grills throughout that are contrasting. Door handle is a little low, but this is illuminated. Uh, that lets you see it at night. You get a little bit of storage here, though it is open. A little bit of storage down here. We get three person memory seats up front. That is both sides. Your mirror controls, power windows that are all express up and down and your window lockout. I do bring up the Bronco quite a bit in this because of the style of it both inside and out. And one design feature inside that reminds me so much of the Bronco but is done better here in the Defender are these grab handles uh, right here on the sides of the dash. If you know anything about the Bronco, the air vents are like recessed back behind it, and that just doesn't work all that well. Defender has solved that by putting them very slim, but up here on the dash. I like that a whole lot better. Ford steal this because that opens all this up for storage, and we'll talk more about it as we move along. We do get power front seats up front uh, with uh, adjustable side bolsters so you can give yourself a nice warm hug with the seats and four-way lumbar. Very nice seats. They are heated, they are ventilated, and uh, they are very comfortable. Black leather up here in this one. No contrasting stitching, so they are a little dull to look at, but they are very comfortable to sit in. Which brings me into it. Again, we are in our lowest ride height, uh, so it is very easy to climb in and out of this vehicle. And you can see uh, we've got dual screens up here, so full digital gauge cluster and a very nice screen right here. I'm gonna put my foot on the brake, push the engine start button, and everything kind of comes to life as we get in here. And uh, we'll work our way across the dash uh, as I typically do. Again, we've got all this storage over here, which is a nice touch. We've got leather, leather or pleather as the case may be. You get your electronic parking brake right here. You can see way down here by my toes is the hood release. I'm going to go ahead and open the door because you've actually got this little um, notch here to keep you from popping the hood unless the door is open. Very interesting. Not sure uh, if there's a big problem with that worldwide, but you have that there. As we come out and look at the steering wheel, I love the steering wheel. It is leather wrapped and the leather is so nice in quality. It is very soft and smooth. I've just enjoyed driving this vehicle around, the feeling that it gives me, uh, just grabbing the steering wheel. It isn't very thickly padded, but it is comfortable to hold. The rim on it uh, is a good, nice diameter. It just feels like a very nice steering wheel. As we look at the steering wheel, we get these multi-position buttons. So depending on what you're doing in the gauge cluster here, uh, these change and light up accordingly. I'm going to go ahead and show you. See, now we have a directional uh, pad here because I hit that center section and we can kind of page through some of the information up here. A lot of things can be done uh, to customize it. You can do the map, media, driver assistance, one dial, two dial. Again, lots of things. I won't go into detail on too much of it, but it is very customizable, which you can put up here. And I'm just going to hit the back button to go back to my trip summary. Your volume roller right here. You have all your uh, driver assistance or cruise control stuff right here. This Interestingly, it does not have radar adaptive uh, cruise control, but I'm okay giving that up. Heated steering wheel button right here, and it is a power tilt and telescope. You might have seen it move uh, when I started the vehicle up, but there are the controls for that right there. Full digital gauge cluster. Again, already talked about some of the things and customization you can do there. And then we have a digital uh, infotainment screen over here. I really like this digital informa information infotainment screen. The home screen is very well thought out. We've got all these tiles that you can page through. You can see it relies heavily on Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We do have wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. In our week with this, I've only had one mishap where it's lost connection. So that's just something to note. 
uh, right there. But you've got your navigation, slope assist, you can see how your vehicle is positioned off road, your compass. So now you can tell exactly where I'm filming right now. Uh, you can slide along. Again, I told you this has water fording, wade sensing uh, in it. So you can know just how much of that, what was it, 34 and a half inches uh, of weight, water wading you've got, but you can turn that on and off. Energy impact, you can see what kind of impact you're having and where that energy is coming from, what it's going to. You see right now I've got the AC on, so that's what it's going to four zone climate control on this. We have air quality sensors in here, which is really nice. You can hit this purify button. I will say just getting into this vehicle, the smell in here. I know this is a test vehicle with nearly 15,000 miles in it, but every time I get in here, it just smells so nice, so premium. It makes me happy just getting in this vehicle. So calling that out because you don't get to see that. Uh, I told you wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, it does a good job of working with multiple phones. My wife and I both have our phones paired to it. It works very well, very nicely. We do get a digital parking button right here, parking camera button. Lots of cameras in this, lots of different angles to view this and attention to detail. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my blinker on here and you can see my blinker is actually flashing on the digital representation that is the right color of our vehicle here. But you can uh, select different camera angles by pressing on the cameras themselves just to look at all the different cameras or you can pan around and look at them uh, from this way, hitting the arrow button right here and view all the different camera angles. You can look behind you, in front of you, whatever the case may be, that is a nice touch. Hit that 3D button, that's a quick way to access it. There is an off-road mode that again shows you all what your uh, suspension is doing. It allows you to see your front tires and see out that front right there. But you do get various different angles here as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, sorry, hit the wrong button. You can hit this button right here and it gives you a, I'm gonna go ahead, put it in drive and show you that the camera remembers what you drive over. And so once you get enough of your uh, vehicle in motion, it gives you not a live video underneath the vehicle, but it shows you what it remembers seeing as your vehicle drove over it. So that is a very nice touch, but it reminds you that's not live. I also like how uh, it, shows you your tires moving on that display as well. You do get a backup camera in this one, which uh, is located underneath that large spare tire back in the back. So the visibility vertically is a little hampered by that, but otherwise nice touch in that. We also have a towing mode, again, showing you uh, that rear camera and a bird's eye 360. One last thing I wanted to call into attention is putting this thing in reverse. We do have the mirrors that drop down to show you the parking lines uh, on either side of you, uh, which you can disable that uh, on and off. Gonna go ahead and put the eight speed back in park. We'll say I have one small gripe with this. You always have to push the button on the back side to go from drive uh, to reverse or uh, from park or to basically take it out of whatever drive mode you're in. I kind of wish once you put it in to drive or reverse that you can simply just pull or push on it uh, to engage the other drive motion, but you have to actually push the button uh, for that to happen. Only a small gripe, but once I trained my brain that that's how it worked, I know it's probably a safety thing so you don't bump it and make the vehicle move in an unintended direction, but that is there. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, Kia, pay attention to what I'm about to talk about because your dual function climate controls with your infotainment controls could learn something here from Defender on this 130. We get dual function, uh, dual climate up here and you can see it says push and seat. So this as it currently is, is my climate control. I push it and now it is my seat ventilation or my seat heat. So I like this as a dual element use up here and just, it works very well. You can see you can turn them both to auto, you can change the fan speed. And then we get a few buttons right here for all your different drive modes. Uh, it is a touch 
sensitive and it adjusts kind of like off-road presets again uh, like that Ford Bronco with its uh, goat modes uh, I put it in wade mode so it, it lifts my suspension up and gets everything ready it changes my readout here in the center display it's showing you exactly what's going on uh, off-road it disables the engine start stop but you can see multiple different drive modes that we can put it in and it adjusts all the different off-road things that you would need which is a very nice touch. You can see putting it in sand mode, it drops me back down. Very interesting there, but we're gonna put it back into uh, normal as we go through this. Really like this uh, infotainment unit. You can see we do get multiple different things that we can do through here. Your seats, uh, your climate control. I can actually control the uh, dual zone rear climate from here as well, or I can lock it can also check the climate uh, or, or uh, the air quality in here as well. Uh, launch, uh, low traction control and launch. You can see uh, various different things you can do with that. Just a lot can be done here in the um, center console infotainment. You can see we even have Alexa. Uh, there is voice recognition. If I say Land Rover, hey Land Rover, see there she is um, so again leaning into the fact that this still is a Land Rover even if it isn't storage in here is very nice I really like it this infotainment screen is uh, floating so I can actually see there are my fingers on the other side of it a full open dash here so you can store a lot of stuff up here this is slightly rubberized so it won't rattle too bad we do have a USB-C port up here that's very nice this doubles as a handle you still get that grab handle over there and then the glove box is typical of a vehicle this size it is a little vertically challenged but that's okay uh, it does go back uh, fairly deep which is nice. I already showed you the doors, but we get this interesting center console here. You will know on certain Defender models, you can option for a front bench seat uh, with a fold down armrest uh, seat back. But here we have the full console. Got open storage here that goes down to the open storage down here with open uh, sides on the side here. Dual cup holders right here. Chi wireless charger that actually does a really good job, but a very small center console opening here. You can see it is weather stripped here because you can't option this to be a refrigerator, but when it is not a refrigerator, it still has all the negative characteristics storage wise of it. So it is a little on the small side. Uh, and this lid kind of locks into place, so if it's open, it doesn't flop around on you. Kind of move past the detent, and then you can close it. Some more painted plastic here, just to give it a more premium look. I like it. It's rather nice. Up here, we get all our controls for our glass roof up above us, and then uh, touch-sensitive light controls as well. The rear view mirror, we don't have the rear view camera mirror in this one, but instead of being mounted to the windshield itself, it's actually mounted to the ceiling. You can see we've got our home link buttons down underneath. I've got plenty of headroom in this big boxy shape, even with the glass panoramic roof. And you can see the part that opens, I'm gonna go ahead and open it, is the large, uh, one of the largest glass moving panels that I've seen in the business with a little teeny tiny uh, glass panel over the rear seats back behind me. So very nice uh, open airy concept here in this one with this light colored uh, headliner as well. That's enough here for the front row. Let's go ahead and we'll pop out and go into the second row. Again, uh, it is very easy getting in and out with it in its entry exit ride height. I really appreciate that. Looking at the back windows, we get this large secondary window that is fixed in place. No sunshades here, but we do get this soft material here on the doors. I don't know if it's actually leather or pleather, but just a nice soft place to rest your arm as well as down here. And we'll go ahead and show you. We have express down windows that roll most of the way down. There's just a little bit peeking up there and they are expressed back up. Again, door handles are kind of low. We do get a little bit of storage right there. And then we get a three person bench seat back here. Again, 40, 20, 40 split bench. We'll talk more about that here in a second. 
do get recline and they do slide forward and aft, which is good uh, for negotiating with rear passengers on uh, legroom. We get the all weather floor mats in this one, three different pieces. I would prefer maybe if this were one single piece, but again, get kind of that retro callback to uh, Land Rover defenders of your Climbing in, sitting behind myself, you can see I have got more than enough space sitting behind myself at 510. I can slide this forward and sit right behind myself. Still decent amounts of room, but you can see the center section rides with the driver's side. Uh, so I will call that out. Go ahead and slide that back all the way back. We get four zone climate control in our model. So we get air vents not only on the back of the center console, which is nice, but not my favorite, but we get them up here as well, just behind our heads. So me as a normal passenger, uh, I get the air like right on the side of my head, which is nice. Works very well for rear seat uh, car seats, especially rear facing car seats, helping keep these kiddos cool in a Texas summer really 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 like these air vents uh here in the back of the defender huge kudos uh to uh, on that one from us here on the channel we do get mesh map pockets back on the back that's a nice touch we get usb c ports with uh, a couple of poverty blanks back here just to let you know uh that we don't have everything possible uh back here you can see this one is just a little loose very interesting um, call out right there. Center seat. We do have a fold down armrest with a couple cup holders in it. I like how it doesn't flop all the way down. We still get little rubber grippers here, but I can push this button right here and fold the seat back down. It is not the entire seat back, so it is not completely flush. This little bit travels with uh, my seat as I fold it down, but if you needed some long items uh, passed through here, it kind of gives you a flush uh, or even uh, pass through as you do that. I'm going to go ahead and fold that back up. All these headrests do fold down independently of the seat back, so if you are going to fold uh, the seats down, you do actually need to uh, push these buttons. If you want to see what it's like to put the car seat in, absolutely uh, give us a follow, subscribe, whatever the case may be, so you can see that uh, when our family review drops. But now you want to see just how usable that back seat is for real life adults. Well, I'll go ahead and show you. I also want to call out uh, while these seats do recline, they are quite comfortable in their upright position. Getting into the back seat, you pull that lever, it tilts and folds the seat back forward. So unfortunately, can't really do that. Sorry, can't really do that with a car seat in place. You're gonna be relegated to simply sliding the seat bottom forward. But you can see I do have a, a modest step in uh, to get back here into the three person rear seat. Before I climb back here, I do want to call out they are individually uh, sectioned off on the seat bottom as well. And we do have lower tethers on the outboard seats to go with the top tethers on the backs of the seats. If you want to do a, a child seat in the center, you're either going to be stealing those lower latches from the outside or doing the seatbelt method. That seatbelt is in the ceiling just above the passenger side headrest. But Let's go ahead, climb back here, and show you exactly what this third row seat is like for me at 510. So, very comfortable back here. You can tell I am sitting up a little bit higher, but I've got plenty of headroom thanks to the uh, glass roof that is back here. It is fixed in place glass, and this is a manual sunshade. So, uh, you're gonna have to climb back here to open and close it. But just nice to know that that is back here. It kind of helps with the claustrophobic feeling uh, that you might get back here. It is very nice. I'm going to go ahead and show you. Uh, my legs are down there. My knees aren't up underneath my chin. It is very nice and very comfortable back here. I get nice amenities uh, like air vents back here behind what is a very large seat panel. But again, is that box on the side of the vehicle. But air vents right here, USB-C power right here, cup holder right here, a little, I'm going to come in close to show you, storage net right here, which would work well for my phone, which plugged into the USB-C. So thoughtfulness uh, tied in right there. And then a little hook here uh, for my seatbelt when not in use. Now, uh, the comfort of these seats, it's nice. It's a little more upright 
um, but there's no way to recline it or move it forward and back from here. It's good. It's nice. I, I'm not complaining. The center seat, though, is a little thin on the seat bottom. You can see uh, that's where all of the seatbelt latches are. This is to receive that seatbelt up from the ceiling. This is to use it as a normal seatbelt. I can sit here in the middle as well but I can definitely tell with my booty uh, that the cushion is thinner, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you here. Tucker's seat is all the way back and it is reclined to match uh, his child seat. My knees would be right in the back of the seat, but again, I showed you that these do uh, slide forward and back. So you can negotiate a very comfortable third row here. This absolutely beats uh, Grand Cherokee L for backseat comfort. This really is a good, comfortable third row for real life adults. Though I do imagine putting three people back here might be a little tight. We've had two adults back here, no complaints. Maybe just the getting in and out, which I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it's like to get out before we go take this one for a drive. So here we go, climbing out. Little footstep right there, and oh, we're out of there. Now, let's hop behind the steering wheel, see how this thing drives on the road. All right, getting in, putting it in drive with this goofy gear selector and setting off. I will say the adaptive air ride suspension in this works so quickly that before I'm really out of my parking spot, I'm already up to normal ride height. So that is one big plus of this air ride suspension. It is very, very quick to react and uh, does a very good job of soaking up uh, the pavement underneath, whatever that may be, or even off-road, uh, all the undulations underneath me. Again, I will remind you, this doesn't ride on a longer wheelbase than the 110. It just has a stretched back end. So really it's just a longer vehicle without a longer wheelbase so as far as the ride goes on this thing it really isn't uh, much different than the 110 although maybe just a little bit heavier which translates to with that uh, inline six cylinder a pretty peppy ride you can see i darted out into traffic this does a great job maneuvering around town it really is a great vehicle to get in and get out and drive and i've kind of alluded to these being a little bit more of an urbanite uh socialite vehicle than an off-road vehicle again first time i drove this was off-road it was the 110 very capable off-road but for this purposes we're talking about its on-road characteristics which are superb and I can't talk about being an urban vehicle uh, without talking the visibility in this one. I absolutely love getting in behind the wheel of this thing. Getting in, sitting in it, I have got a great view over the dash, over the hood. I feel like I'm sitting up, not down in a box, not down in a hole. I, I can see and survey the surroundings around me. So whether I am parking in a shopping mall parking lot, or I'm venturing off-road, visibility out of this is very good. The visibility out of the windows is very good. The extra length back there doesn't really benefit me too much because of the headrests in the second row, but the extra fixed in place window on the back door absolutely does help uh, when peeking over my shoulders. This does have blind spot monitoring in it as well. So uh, excellent job there, uh, helping keep eyes on it. And we already talked about uh, the camera system in this one. So really good visibility all the way around in this one. Can't complain, very good sized mirrors. They work, they do the job quite well. But as I am stuck in stop and go traffic, I will talk a little bit about the engine, the hybrid system and the transmission. The mild hybrid nature of this vehicle is a bit aggressive when it comes to shutting the gas engine off in a few different situations. And one of those is stop and go traffic kind of feels like it's a little too eager to turn the gas engine off which kind of makes it stutter and maybe makes it feel a little sluggish off the line but this is a quick vehicle again you saw me kind of dart out into traffic merging onto highways there's no problem with this this has plenty of power definitely enough torque uh, to get this big three-row suv 
moving. This does a great job at moving itself. It's just that little kind of stop and go situation when you take your foot off the brake and expect to go in stop and go traffic. Not the best. Uh, I, I wish that they can figure that out a little bit more. I don't know if it's the stop start system here on this mild hybrid or if it is the transmission not exactly knowing what to do but I can say that it's not my favorite in stop and go traffic which kind of has me pushing this uh, start stop defeat button a little more than I normally would in a vehicle while testing it. It is one of the downsides to uh, the driving experience I've had in my week-long experience with this vehicle. Otherwise, when you are moving, this thing is a blast to drive. Uh, the steering is not too light, not too heavy. Again, visibility being very good, the power being very good. This has been a very fun, delightful vehicle to pilot around uh, as I've driven it around over the week that we've had it. And uh, some interesting notes that I'll go ahead and share with you uh, from my time with it. The blinker does sound very mechanical, like it's coming from this area somewhere, but I have a sneaking suspicion it's not, that it's simply playing through the center speaker right here, because I've noticed like if I'm on a call or using the voice activation from my Apple device, it like mutes the blinker, even though I can still see that the blinker is on. So very interesting thing that I came across uh, in my time driving this one around. Uh, some other fun things uh, that I've noticed in it. Uh, it does have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I've seen a couple times on this journey alone and once prior to this, a little bit of interruption with the connection there. Not quite sure why it went back to the home screen here, uh, even though it shows to still be connected to my phone, which is in my back pocket. But uh, generally, I've had a positive experience uh, with the wireless Apple CarPlay in this. The steering wheel, I already mentioned, is really soft. My hand glides over it very easily. But I really like this. It's got to be metallic accents all the way around. It's very nice. Uh, it, again, just feels very premium in this vehicle. Like it a lot. I'm going to go ahead and put it in its maxed off-road ride height uh, as we get ready to turn on the historic brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas, just to see how this thing holds up in less than ideal uh, underneath situations. I, I don't want to say pavement, even though I am going on the brick streets, uh, but it's an off-road ride height, so we'll see what it's like. As we turn up here, it will be very good to note that at higher speeds, it does go ahead and drop me down into a more aerodynamic ride height. But I can tell you, up on off-road ride height, I do feel like I'm on my tiptoes in this. Yeah, this, this is not bad. So again, comparing it to, I keep bringing it up, the Jeep Grand Cherokee that we had very recently. This thing compares very favorably. The air ride suspension just feels like it works a whole lot better than that Grand Cherokee. Uh, the overall feel, fit and finish inside and out feels more premium. And it's not really selling at much more of a premium than the Grand Cherokee or the Grand Cherokee L. So you will remember we had the two row four uh, by E Trailhawk version and it's stickered for around, I believe $73,000. This three row 130 uh, does stickered for a little bit more at 88, but it does start at 73. So it is very close in that realm of pricing. And I would say this is a much more premium experience than that Grand Cherokee. I did joke that the Grand Cherokee is America's Range Rover. Range Rover now being a sister brand of this Defender, both under the Land Rover mark. But uh, yeah, very fun, very pleasant experience driving this Defender 130 around 
so much fun. I am going to be so sad when this one leaves us. I have found myself grabbing the keys to this vehicle way more than the other vehicle we're testing alongside of it, which itself was a mild hybrid with an inline six. I'll let you guess exactly what vehicle we're testing alongside of this one. Be sure and hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you are notified when our family review of this Defender drops where I put Tucker's child safety seat in the back and do all the family things as well as let Holly drive this one, see what she thinks of this. She did have the other British car that we've uh, had in our uh, household uh, since she and I have been married. You can find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, YouTube, everything at GT Garage Talk, or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for me, behind the wheel of the Defender 130, which granted, I want the Defender 110. I have priced one out for four grand cheaper than this. But until next time, gearheads, where am I looking? Bye. A camera. I'm reviewing it for YouTube. <laughs> After owning that Mini Cooper, uh, I have decided officially, unofficially for our household, we will not own another vehicle that does not have local dealer representation, of which the nearest JLR dealership is probably two hours away from us. I'd break that rule uh, for this vehicle 100%. Uh, I like it that much. and probably might regret that because historically uh, this brand, this family of brands has a history of needing to go into the shop maybe once or twice during the course of ownership. Now miss it. Don't leave. I want to keep. I really do like this one. I want to keep this one. I'll get the fall colors out to the A2. It's just, ah.